Hi, third, fourth, and fifth grade leaders. We are preparing for our lesson on January 26th in our series called Lost and Found. In this series, we've been taking a look at what it means to learn to pray and how to build a relationship with God through prayer. What we um, know is that we can't build a relationship by just um not talking to each other, not getting to know each other. And the way we do that with God is to talk to him and to read his word and to spend time um, listening to worship music and things that are going to fill us with ideas of who God is, maybe the world around us. All of those things will help us build a relationship with God so that when we go and talk to him through prayer, obviously our prayer is not going to change who God is. What it helps change is our idea of what God can do for us. When we begin to build that relationship through through prayer, we are changing our hearts and our minds so that we can trust God with much bigger stuff. In fact, our story today is going to help us see God in a much bigger way. Um, our story is from Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7 is about a dream that Daniel had actually before Daniel and the lion's den happened. But in the Bible, it is in chapter 7. And last week we talked about Daniel and the lion's den in chapter 5. So um, what we're seeing is kind of like a flashback picture of a dream that Daniel had of something still to come. Like we've been talking about the Israelites and how God has been preparing them for their Savior to come, right? Our Savior as well, but we're living post-Jesus time. This story today is going to help us not only see that God prepared the Savior to come and rescue us from our sins, but he is coming back to rule over the world um, and things will change drastically. That, like all of this time is that we're waiting for Jesus's return is so that each person has the chance to believe that Jesus is their Savior. And so in our in our story today, Daniel has a dream about several um, probably fictitious characters, except for that they represented um, kingdoms um, that were ruling in Daniel's time. And so the first thing that Daniel saw was a um, strange, well, they all, all of these creatures came out of the sea. <laughs> and the first one was a lion that had feathers. And then the second one was a bear that had bones in its mouth. And the third one was a, like a leopard, but it had wings. And the fourth one had eyes and horns. And the, then he saw God on his throne. God didn't come up out of the water. God didn't come up out of the same place where all of these creatures came out of. He is on his throne. And um, Daniel, as he is having this dream, is kind of concerned because he doesn't understand what all of this means and probably scared too because if you've ever had a dream where there are crazy creatures or th fictitious things um, that you know wouldn't be in that setting, I'm sure it was very terrifying to him. So he prays to God and he asks God to show him what this means. And what God shows him is that the kingdoms on earth will come and go. These creatures that come out of the sea, that will come and that will go and they will be good kings and there will be bad kings and, and there will be kings who do really bad things. All of that comes and goes, but God is on his throne. God knows what is happening. God is directing eternity. And it, because God is in his place, he will rule forever. And his king, his kingdom will rule over the earth again one day. But until then, um, we all live in kind of the tension of all of these um, earthly kings. And so one day, people in the world, when Jesus returns, will only worship Jesus. In other words, when Jesus comes back 
and rules over the earth, the only people left on the earth will be Jesus followers and Jesus um, worshipers. And so what God is doing in this time of waiting that we are in right now, he is waiting for every single person to have the opportunity to believe that Jesus is their savior because he doesn't want any of us to perish without knowing that Jesus is our savior. Hopefully you're beginning to see some of the big picture of what God has created um, in his story through the Bible is not only did he prepare the Israelite people, he continues to prepare us for the future and what is coming. And so in your small group time, you um, have a couple things. As you come in today, you will have a bucket full of some supplies. And it, the kids have had so much fun doing these little activities. And I'm so glad that they have. It's fun to use our brain in a different way and get the chance to connect with each other. Games are good, um, but some of us sometimes need um, the ability to be creative and be um, free in our creativity. And I hope these activities are helping you guys do that as a small group. Um, today, your challenge is to build an unsinkable boat. What I'm going to do is I have a couple of, oh, I can't reach the big, you know those big black buckets I have? I'll have a couple of those in the back of the room set up for you guys on the tile that have um, water in it. And so you can, once the kids have built their boat, they can go try to float it back there on the tile. That way we um, keep the water a little bit more contained and it's not um, a little easier to clean up later on. Um, but they should use whatever supplies they can come up with to try to that's in their bucket to try to build a boat that doesn't sink. And what they're going to do is try to put um, pennies or heavy things in their boat to try to sink it and see how much, how long it can float before it sinks. Um, so that is actually, it looks like You'll just have aluminum foil potentially, but I'm going to give you guys a few extra things too, because it's just been fun for the kids to test that out and figure that out. Then in your small group time, you are going to um, play kind of a game. And this is a game that maybe you've played with the kids, um, with a group of kids or with a group of adults before. It's kind of one of those games where you have to pay attention to what somebody is saying and figure out how you're going to add to the story. And so um, it's called The Perfect Kingdom. And you can ask the kids to sit in a circle and they're going to tell about um, if they were king, I would. Now, let me give you a little hint and you may wanna give this to the kids. Every kid um, could create this really big story of what they would do if they were king, but to play this game and to be successful at this game, they probably need to give like a very short answer because so, what happens is I'm going to answer, if I were king, I would um, allow everybody to have french fries every day. And so what the next person is going to do is they're going to say, if I were king, I would um, wear the color purple every day and give everybody french fries every day and so what they're supposed to do is tell what they would do and add what the what the people before them have said so the last person in the circle has a lot to say and then i would tell you to go back to the first person and they have to say everybody's um statement about being king and if you want to, you could write it down on a piece of paper to help everybody organize it. Um, they're third, fourth, and fifth graders. They could stretch their brain a little bit and try to remember these things um, without having the visual cue. But you know your small group. If you've got a few kids in your group, that, that would frustrate them um, tremendously not to be successful at this game. Help them out. It's okay. We really want them to learn to interact with each other and to listen to each other. And when they are listening to each other, then we can talk about big things. And this story today is a big deal story. In fact, I encourage you as you are finishing up this game to go back, and this is strategic guys, do this activity first because this helps, helps 
helps you have better discussion. Do the activity first and then go and do the discussion questions. Um, because we have so many kids coming from so many different backgrounds. They don't have the basis of the Bible to be able to build off of. So they've got to, to have conversation. They have to build off of shared experiences with you and with other people in the group. So let's build that relationship first, and then you can have discussion. And you have really great discussion questions today that should be and help you have really um, maybe some big questions. And maybe after you're done, you don't wanna do the discussion questions at all. Maybe you want to spend a little bit of time asking the kids if they have any questions. If any of these things that we're talking about, about dreams and about God and about his character and about prayer, if any of those things um, make them have questions and let's talk about what those questions are. And um, if you don't have an answer for the question, tell them, I don't have an answer to that question today, but I would love the chance to answer that again. The next time you're here, will you come talk to me about that again? Cause I'm gonna spend some time trying to figure out how to answer your question. And then um, your memory verse activity, you have and I've heard a few of you say, you don't know how to play this game. Don't worry, I don't know how to play this game either. So you could either have the kids just line up the balls in order so that they're saying them in reverse. You could try to figure out a way to pass the cup with the ball so that they're, I, I honestly, the instructions seemed easy, but I didn't understand it. So um, really, ultimately, we want kids to understand to memorize this memory verse because these memory verses help us later on, um, especially when you're on your own, um, remember who God is and um, maybe some things we know about God so that we can trust him when we get stuck in a situation. So that's the big reason we do memory verse activities with the kiddos. And then you can pray with your kids encourage them to go home and to talk to somebody, whether it's a family member or a friend or somebody, about what they're learning about who God is, how, how they're learning about prayer, and ways that they're learning to pray to God. We have a huddle coming up on February 2nd. I hope you guys will all plan to be there with us. You should receive an email asking you to let us know that you're coming. Um, that is so that we can make plans to feed for, feed you guys. Um, we want to have enough food, so and we have great food. Um, we want to have enough food to feed you. And so if, if you think you will come at all, please let us know that you think you might come so that we can um, make that plan for how to feed everybody. And also so that we can make sure that we have enough people there to help take care of all of the kids that will be there. We want it to be a safe environment for everyone and for them to have fun as well. Thank you so much for leading. I look forward to seeing you guys soon.